Okay, so um, it's been about an hour or so I have actually updated. I went ahead and updated both of these devices just because, well, you know, I could. This one is incredibly warm, actually. I uh, forgot how warm this thing can get. This thing gets hot at the back, though, but that's weird. Anyway, uh, so I've used this one a bit. I've played around with the software. I have not yet turned this one on, so uh, let's go ahead and boot this one up. Here's that one, and here's this one. I'm gonna actually pull it away here so I can enter my passcode. There's that one. So here they both are, both of them with iOS 4.2, and I'm going to open up the Notes application on this one. There we go, and as you can see right here, it's actually defaulted itself to the chalkboard font, um, which is pretty cool. So, I'm going to be uh, basically going through all of the features that have been listed um, on the little updater box thing, and uh, and as well as a few other ones that um, they did not mention that either I noticed or that you know I just read elsewhere. Okay, so one of the first, so the very first feature that uh, was listed in the iOS updater form was AirPrint. And unfortunately, I do not have any AirPrint compatible printers, but I will show you how to access it and what the whole interface looks like. So, let's say I wanted to print off my blog, for instance. I've got my blog up here ready um, that we're going to be using for demonstration purposes for Safari. Um, so, uh, what you do is you actually, they, you might notice they changed this symbol here from a plus to that little arrow thing that you see throughout uh, the uh, Apple's OS. And as you can see here, there's a new button called print, and this print button will show up in several different places. All you got to do is you got to hit select printer, but as I've already said, there are, we don't have any compatible ones. No printers found. But then you can set how many copies you want. If you see right here how I'm setting the copies, either up with the plus or down with the subtraction there. And then you can hit the print button and it will wirelessly print it. Now one thing I have yet to see is does this work with the um, second generation iPod Touch? So let's find out. I haven't yet tried it on there. As you can see that button change is also applied to the iPod Touch second generation. Hit there. Nope, it doesn't look like it's, it can support printing. So if you have an, a second generation or an iPhone 3GS, you are out of luck. I do apologize for that. Now, I, as you may remember, this printer has a USB port. I have very low hopes for this, but is it possible that I can print through this USB port? So I've got here a sync cable all ready to go. Let's just plug her into the port here. There's that. I'm going to plug it into my fourth generation first. So, let me do that real quick. There it is. Let's see, that is not blinking as of yet. But, let's see now what happens when I push print. Select printer. Let's see if it can find this one. No printers found. So unless if there's actually another way to get to um, wire printers that is physically connected to, it doesn't look like you can connect through a cable or you can print via via cable. So that's pretty unfortunate there. But um, what can you do? Um, so um, that's pretty much air printing. It doesn't seem to work very well. Uh, like that. So let me just go ahead and unplug this again. Set this cable up on my bed so I can use it tonight. There's that. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at the next feature Apple has listed in their iOS device thing. Also, supposedly there's been some performance boosts in the second in the second gen and the iPhone 3G's so if you do have one of those and you're complaining about slow speeds 
it looks like Apple might have done some enhancements to actually make it go a little bit more smoothly. And from what I can tell, it actually appears that they have. When I typed up these notes when I was updating my fourth generation one, it felt very slow and jerky. It feels a lot smoother now that I've updated. So, I think they've done a few things to that. So, what's the next thing? AirPlay. Unfortunately, I have no way of demonstrating this, but maybe we can try. So, I'm going to go in my music here. I'm going to go... I'm going to see if the button appears, if this thing will support it. We're going to show my Wi-Fi thing, because it literally is no sound at all. And I don't want to get hit for copyright stuff. And it does not appear that this has um, airplay. Now, I, w oh, um, I would demonstrate it with this one, but I don't have any music or anything on there. Although I do have some videos recorded from the camera. So let's take a look at those. Let's go in here and camera roll. Uh, let's just click on this one with me and my little sister sledding. Is there a way for me to do airplay on this? Sorry, the sound's turned off. Uh, doesn't look like it. But, um, let me also show you this. If you're on a photo, here's a picture of the monitor that I recently made a tutorial on how to make. And this is the very one I made in that video, actually. There is another print option down here. Whoops. We do not want to use it as a wallpaper. We want to print it. Well, we can't print it, but we do want to... I did want to show you that that's how you get to that and the interface is exactly the same you can set how many copies of it you want to you can select your printer and then there's the print button down there if I ever do get a uh, pr if a compatible printer um, then I will definitely do a demonstration on that but for now it appears that we can't do that so there's also if you look right here if you hit this button down here or if you do have some other like the faces and places enabled it'll be up here but click this you can actually print multiple photos at a time with by as you can see just hit the print button and you'll be able to print multiple printers at uh, multiple photos at a time so that's that little feature there all right let's take a look at the next little feature thing that they have added Ooh, facetime improvements initiate calls with voice control let's try that now i'm not going to be able to call anybody but i am going to initiate a facetime call nonetheless but it's not going to do anything well you'll see what i mean i'm going to facetime myself facetime p i z z s e n the time is 7.33. Okay, that's not what I said. Actually, you know what? It probably cannot read my name, so I'm just going to have to say... Actually, hold on real quick. I need to hear how this thing says my name. Okay. Oh, I need to cut the up. Oh, listen to this. This is cool. Hold on. Pizza Video Maker Pisk. Do you recognize that sound? This is actually only available with the when you use voice control. Pisk. It's pisk. So I've got to say that. Okay. Home. Alert. Turn voice over off. Voice over off. Okay, here we go again. I'm going to try this again. FaceTime. Pisk. The time is 7.34 p.m. Okay, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> um, hold on real quick. This will be very hard to mess up, so we'll see now if I'm doing this right. Or maybe this is probably an iPhone-only feature, but we'll still try it nonetheless. Anyway, Bob. I know how to say Bob. FaceTime, Bob. No match found. FaceTime, Bob. No music. Let me hold it. Oops. Let's try this one more time. FaceTime, Bob. No music. 
Okay, I've got to stop that because I'm wasting time. But you can somehow, I don't know how you do this yet, but you can somehow initiate a FaceTime call with the voice control. I need to do a little bit more research on how to do that. Well, I would think you would just say FaceTime and then their name. Actually, let me do a little bit of research on this. Or, well, nah, I'm not. I'll... But that is a new feature. I just don't know how to do it. You can also initiate calls from a SMS conversation. I can't do that because I don't have an iPhone. And it has support for Bluetooth accessories. Speaking of Bluetooth, one thing I was wondering, um, this isn't an official feature, but is it actually possible to uh, connect to other iPhones now via Bluetooth? Like to, you know, share photos directly from whatever you want to call it, whatever, you know what I mean? Let's just try this out. I don't think this is going to work. I have very low hopes for this, but I was just kind of curious. Let's see if it finds something. No, but it doesn't seem to be working. Also, I do apologize for the setting crap quality. It turns out my camera was set to highest quality, and that is not the setting I generally film at, due to the fact that it takes my computer ages to actually send that file to the hard drive, and now it's going to take me a while to edit it. Grr. Oh well, at least you got a bit of good quality footage. So, you cannot actually connect to another iPhone or iPod Touch via Bluetooth. Oh well. Let's check out the next feature. You can find text on Safari web pages. Oh look, remember what I was talking about last time? The internet just cut out on us. <sighs> they did not fix that in this update. Why, Apple? Why? Okay, but... I still do want to demonstrate this, and it looks like I can because we do have a web page up. So, if you click on the Google thing, I'll do that one more time. Cancel. Cancel. Click there. You can search for a word. So, let's look for blog. I think. Yeah, blog. And give some time. See, on this page. Now, since we don't have internet connectivity due to the cursed internet glitch, um... This would normally be at the bottom of everything, but since it does not connect to the internet, you know. Okay, find blog. Let's see. Oh, they found something. There are six matches, so there's blog. We can zoom into it if we'd like to. Um, maybe. Yeah, but you can see what it does. It highlights it in yellow, just like that. You can see that, so let's see what the next one is. Right there. Next one is right here. The next one is there blog archive. Oh, there's another one. Then there's the last one. That's a pretty handy feature. I'm sure I'll find myself using it okay, um, in the future. Um, in fact, I think I found myself needing to use something like that earlier today, so that's pretty a pretty handy feature, if you ask me. And um, I haven't actually checked to see if it works on this one. I think it should. Let's look for P-I-Z-Z-S-E-N. Oop, sorry. P-I-Z-Z-S-C-N. It should, just mainly because, you know, I don't know. Oh, it doesn't work. That's actually very surprising. I wouldn't think it took, it'd take that much processing power to do that. That's actually kind of sad, actually, to tell you the honest truth. But, yeah, if you um, are on a newer device, I don't know why, I don't see why this would work on an older one. But if you're on a newer device, you can look for text in uh, in web pages with Safari, which is a really handy feature, if you ask me. New fonts available for notes. This is apparently on this one. So if you go into settings, look down here, you'll notice there's now a new setting for notes. If you click it, you can now set select from two different notes. I've got this one set to Helvetica. Hold on, my new one is set to Helvetica. So I'm going to scroll that up to the top and we're going to do a quick comparison. Here's Chalkboard versus Helvetica. So we've got this one set to Chalkboard and this one set to Helvetica. And uh, here's Helvetica. As you can see, it looks basically like um, MSN Serif or something very similar to that. As you can see, I really like this font. Here's Chalkboard. It's a lot clearer than the marker felt thingamajig. And just to prove that to you, I'm going to set this one to marker felt real quickly. So if I can get to it, notes. I'm going to set this one to marker felt. There we go. And now we have the marker felt. So you can see this one is just really bleh-ish, you know what I mean? 
This one here, much cleaner. Much, much, much cleaner. And if we scroll up here a little bit and see... Um, Actually, yeah, let me see something real quickly. I do apologize for this, guys. But as you can clearly tell, um, looks like Markerfeld can actually, uh, you can actually read more information on less lines than you can on chalkboard, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, for instance, on this one, the airplay is a little bit above the airplay over here. I don't know if that really makes sense to you guys or not. But let's go back into settings. We'll try out Helvetica real quick. Or, no, let's go back to Markerfeld. Um... Actually, let's go back to um, Helvetica on this one, just because. And it looks like it's about the same as the um, as the chalkboard. Actually, it's exactly the same, really, to tell you the truth. Maybe there's like a one character difference, I don't know. But yeah, I was just comparing the sizes of the different fonts there. So, that's that. New SMS uh, slash MMS text tones and the ability to send custom set custom tones per contact. Unfortunately, they did not include these in the iPod Touch software update, so I'm not going to be able to show that to you. But um, look it up. Maybe somebody else did a demonstration of those. If you want to see those, um, you can just look that up. Additional restrictions. Let's take a look at these account settings. So let me show you how to get to these. If you go into your settings, general restrictions and there they are you can enable a quick passcode we'll just do one two three four just to be basic and put it again <clears throat> so the first one is account settings which I think has to do with email so there's account settings you can also turn off now app deleting so let's turn that off and uh, or not enable it um, you can also do Game Center Friends, and uh, so let's go ahead and do that, Add adding friends. I don't know if I'll be able to demonstrate that. I'm just showing you what all you can add and not add. And location services. So, that. Okay, let's go ahead and close this out, and I'll show you what all effects this has done. So, starting with account settings, let's go back into my... Actually, I don't know if I really should. Well, let's see. Yep, you see, if I go into my mail right here... Um, you can see that they're all grayed out. You can't do anything about that. So that's that. Um, the next one is app deleting. So now if I wanted to go in here and delete an app, I can move them around still, but I, there's no little X's, so I can't delete any apps. And Game Center Friends, if I were to get a new friend request, I would not be able to add them. And location information, not allowed. And um, just really quickly, out of sake of curiosity, I do want to see if this is available on these. I would assume they are. Yep, there's that. No more deleting apps. You can also, yep, they're all accessible on the older generation. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off while we... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Here's another interesting feature. You can uh, import .ics files into Calendar. I don't have any .ics files to, Im to uh, import into Calendar, um, so I cannot really demonstrate that. And I just turned those off, so as you can see, they've automatically went all back to on, so that way they're all allowed. Yep, and the bug fixes. Those are the bug fixes. I've already read them off to you at the beginning of this video. And if you want to take another look at those, you can. And there are the compatible generations. And on this iPod Touch right here, I've got a few more features that um, were not listed that I either found or read about. So, under other features, and if you are wanting to see all of these features, I will be putting this... I will finally get around to be uh, get around to updating that um, scroll bar on my blog if you want to check that out. Master volume and multitasking bar. This is obviously only available in the second or the in the uh, third and fourth generation iPod touches in the iPhone 4 and iPhone 3GS. Basically, what this is from anywhere, and this is a feature I'm so glad they did because they are actually basically if you own the new iPod Touch. There are basically two volume settings. There are the ringer volume, as you see right there, 
kind of like on the iPhone, the ringer volume. And then there's the master volume, which is for games and music and videos and YouTube and all that stuff. Well, finally, they give you a way to actually change that. Just go into the multitasking, swipe over to the left, and swipe over to the left again, and there is your master volume slider. And that's how you adjust that. Unfortunately, and I really, really wish Apple would soon give us an easy and quick way to adjust the brightness. The iPad gets that. The iPad gets a brightness slider, but the iPod Touch and iPhones don't yet. So keep that in mind. So if, it, if uh, in case it was out of frame, there is the volume slider. You use that to adjust the master volume. But that does not affect the ringer, as you will see, see right here. So I've cut that down, but the ringer is still set to maximum. And just in case you're really, really anal like that, that's still like that. Or not anal, but picky, I guess, or, you know, I don't know, pushy. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. So there's that. Um, new voice memos icon. I'm sure you might have already caught this. Um, as you can see over here, new voice memos icon. Let me focus on that a little better. There is your new voice memos icon. And here it is over here. So there's a new voice memos icon, and in terms of the way it looks on the inside, it is exactly the same. So there's no new features or anything in voice memos. So that's that. But the, it's, again, exactly the same. Um, and uh, the plus button in Safari has changed to an arrow icon. I think I've already showed you this. As you can see right there, it's no longer a plus sign. is now a little thing. I'm not too big a fan of this change, actually. I kind of like the plus button. I really do. I think it looks better. But uh, it'll grow on me. You know, everything grows on me. It just does eventually. And a nice gradient uh, effect to scrolling messages and alerts. Let's see if I can bring it up on this. Oh, I can't do it on there. But over here, if I go in here, let me bring this back. I'm going to bring this in landscape. And this alert is going to be too big for it all to load, so it gives us a scrolling one, and look at that. They gave us a nice little gradient effect, and this looks really, really good. It's not it's kind of hard to see on camera, actually, but it, it's there nonetheless. Look for yourself on your own if you don't. Uh, it, it looks much, much better than what they had before, I have to admit that. Not that the other one looked bad, but this is just a nice little touch. I think it looks really, really good, actually, so there's that. And that is all I know for on the iOS 4.2. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below in a comment below, or send them over to pizzascience1ayahoo.com. Also, be sure to check out my blog. Link is down below in the description. And follow me on Twitter if you would like to at twitter.com forward slash pzzscn. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in my next video. Adios.